All right, it's Barry, and today I'm great. I've got my first ever allotment vlog. So back in the greenhouse because it's absolutely freezing outside and I don't want to be standing outside there freezing to death when I could be stood in here with the wind everything picking up probably sounds awful on the microphones as well so uh, I'll come back in here and do my video so it's much nicer it's not got a heater in here uh, so it's not it's still not warm it's absolutely freezing in here as well but it's definitely better than being out there with that wind you might have noticed I've got a slightly different intro this week and I made it especially for this episode while it's my first vlog I thought I'd have a go at doing a new intro just for this week just to start it off and maybe you'll be recognizing it and you can't think, where was that from? Where was that music from? It was from BBC Gardener's World in the 1980s. So maybe if you watch Gardener's World around that time, it used to be on BBC Two, you'll probably recognise that music and maybe the intro as well. I can't remember it, it's a bit before my time, but maybe if you're a bit older, maybe you watched Gardener's World in the 80s, you'll certainly remember that music. And before we get cracking, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all of my gardening videos. I've got new gardening videos every week and hopefully I'll do some more of these vlogs if you like these as well. So make sure you let me know in the comments if if there's anything that you'd like to see on these vlogs it's a really nice way to get some gardening news in and some jobs to do for the week um, and things that you can be getting on with yourself as well so yeah do let me know if there's anything you'd like to see and obviously yeah subscribe as well to keep up to date so I'm still in the greenhouse, I was just about to go outside and it started absolutely battering it down with hailstone. It's absolutely freezing this week in the UK and we're dealing with the beast from the east too, which is uh, what the news have decided to call it, but I am fairly sure that it has been called more than twice in the UK uh, in the whole of history, so they decided to go with beast from the east too anyway. Um, because we've got some cold weather coming from the east. Uh, down in the southeast, it's absolutely battering it down with snow down there. We don't really talk about them. But up here in the northwest, we're on the western coast, and it's normally a bit milder, actually. So this week, it's going to be minus four, which is a lot colder than what it normally is. I can't even remember the last time it snowed properly here and stuck. That's how like mild it is compared to the rest of the country. We're like in a pocket of uh, a pocket of milder air that just doesn't let the snow come in. But it's snowing a little bit today. So let's get outside while there's a bit of a break in the hailstone and uh, I'll show you my new polytunnel. I picked it up off eBay, it's not new, it's used. I got it off eBay at the weekend, I had to go and dismantle it and everything, so that was a bit of a pain, but I've uh, got some new screws and everything for it and I've reassembled it here. The cover, I've not bothered putting on yet because we keep still having morons coming in uh, like on the weekend looking somewhere to uh, sit and smoke special cigarettes, so I've not put the cover on just for now. It's in the shed and I'm just gonna put it on when I'm actually gonna start using it when it's ready to go and hopefully they've found somewhere else to go in when it's a bit warmer in spring so let's go outside now I'm just going to show you my uh, polytunnel and I'll have a look what plans I've got for it and there it is it's absolutely massive it's six meters long and three meters wide and I'm really happy with this actually it's a bit rusty on the bottom but that isn't going to cause me any problems and the cover is in really good condition as well it just needs a good clean um, and I've put it in this corner now I was going to put it over here in the, like in the middle of the allotment but um, I decided to put it more in that corner so it was a bit more protected and you couldn't really see it as much from outside the allotments because obviously I don't want people breaking in and uh, damaging it or going in there and maybe kicking a plant or something. So yeah, I decided I'm going to keep it in this corner and um, keep it over here and keep it where it's a bit more sort of shielded by the greenhouses from sort of the outside path. Uh, in the middle of it, you can see I've got like where my pumpkins were. I've got all my carpets on here at the moment. I've got like that chip bark underneath. Um, and I put these carpets on here. These were out of the greenhouse. So uh, yeah, I probably use these carpets for a bit of a base layer in here actually. And then I've just got the, uh, the broad bean sort of section there as well, but I'll get rid of that and uh, put some put some beds in. The only other problem is I've got the tree in here, which is my apple tree. and. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out, so I'm going to keep it in here. It is showing some signs of life now as we're getting into spring. And yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to keep it in here. I'm going to grow it inside. I'm going to prune it and everything to keep the size down. I'd rather just not dig it up and disturb it and uh, end up wrecking it after it's done so well for a year. So yeah, I'll keep it in here, prune it, and uh, it'll be a nice thing to have an indoor apple tree, I suppose. So yeah, probably just going to get some wood build some beds in here uh, I'm just gonna do it all no dig 
do a lot of no dig beds and uh, it's just it, the ground here is so horrible it's like absolutely packed packed with glass and bits of metal and nails and stuff so yeah i'm gonna try no dig this year i'm gonna do it for all the allotments actually i'm gonna get loads more stuff in by doing that because i spent like so many hours last year digging out these beds and like double digging them and everything and it was absolutely back breaking so i'm not gonna bother with that this year gonna do no dig um and yeah should hopefully in a couple of weeks be looking really good in here so yeah i'll do another update then and uh, you can see how that's getting on so next job today i've got to sort the floor out in my greenhouse it's time to start getting this uh, in some kind of shape ready for spring and the floor if you remember a couple of weeks ago um i had a the roof smashed and stuff and some idiots broke in um so still got tiny little fragments of glass on there but that's not too much of a problem because i am going to cover it with that bark um i'm gonna have to just move some stuff out of the way i've got two massive bags of bark um i'm gonna cover the floor in here and it should work hopefully um in the summer when it gets absolutely boiling in here um i can wet the floor i can wet all that bark and it'll keep the humidity up in here really really well so hopefully that's going to work and really improve the humidity in here because it's really dry in here obviously um, during the summer and it's really really difficult to keep the humidity up i had the carpets and i was wetting the carpets but they were drying out really quickly and i had buckets of water in here and everything uh, but yeah i'm gonna get that bark in here now get the floor covered um, and see how that looks hopefully it's not rubbish because otherwise i'm gonna have to take it all out again and i can't be bothered doing that uh, but yeah i don't see why it shouldn't be that bad because the other greenhouse is really cool and uh yeah let's get that done Oh well that's that broke, uh, still got my irrigation system in there, uh, didn't actually work very well, it's like a bottle that's high up on a table and uh, fill that up with water and it sort of drips in through this sort of little hose thing around the outside, probably just going to take that out anyway because yeah it didn't work very well, I'm going to have to redo it all and maybe try and find a better way. Uh, but I probably could have got a smaller bag of bark, the really heavy, I probably should have got just uh, some uh, smaller ones in higher quantity probably would have been easier to carry because this is large size 90 litre pack uh but yeah hopefully two and a bit of these should be enough to cover the greenhouse so let's see how that works out if two and a bit of them is gonna fill this greenhouse floor i'll be amazed do you know what that's not done that bad uh yeah maybe uh maybe it is gonna be enough this is a problem under here this has always been uh, always been doing this so i'm just going to sort that out now um, and make sure that it isn't just going to be filling up all the time and the way i'm going to do that is with my brake try again Ugh. there we go that'll drain out there so that's that another job done just going to do the rest of this and uh, see how that turns out and then i'll uh, i'll come get you Definitely need another bag, I'll just go get another bag. And there we are, three bags actually uh, seem to be the uh, right amount. Now once this dries out a bit, it'll uh, be a different story again. So I'll be able to like sort of uh, go over it again with the rake and break it all up again once it dries out a bit and it's not all as compressed. But yeah, actually really pleased with this. Uh, all the tomatoes and stuff are going to be going here in the summer do my big tomato experiment so all of those are going to be going here now that i've got all that extra room for uh, cucumbers and things in the polytunnel but yeah it's turned out really good and i'm absolutely freezing uh, I see my breath now it's that cold in here i need to get the heater on uh, and get this all closed up so i'm just going to go over to the other greenhouse and see what we've got next so there we go i've got my gloves on because uh, my hands are freezing uh, i'm going to start some seeds off today i'm going to be doing some uh, some different types i'll show you what i've got now uh, i'm going to just put them in like toilet roll tubes in some plastic tubs and i'm going to take them home uh, i'm not going to be leaving them here while it's so cold i'm just going to take them home and i've got like a diy grow box it's just like a heat mat in the bottom and it's uh, sort of wrapped up in foil like not foil like insulating foily stuff for your house um and then it's got like some lights and stuff in the lid i made it last year and it worked really well so um these boxes should hopefully i uh, should be able to fit quite a few in there so i've got three of these little seed trays um and they fit quite nicely into these little plastic boxes i'm just going to do these today i brought loads of toilet rolls and loads of these tubs so that i could do them in sixes and 
take them home and put them into my, my growing box but uh, I forgot my scissors so um, I can't find the ones I've got here anywhere so I'm just gonna have to do with these for now I've only got a couple of things to plant anyway um, I've got some little gem lettuces um, I've got some uh, simmering romaine lettuces and um, some leeks and I'm just gonna do six of each for today um, I'm just gonna do a sowing every week so that they keep growing throughout the year so I'm just using normal compost I'm just gonna fill all of these up squidge them down a little bit I don't want it packed in too much um, and then I'm just gonna leave a little bit of a gap so I can just put a bit of a dusting over the top once the seeds are on there right there we go I've made an absolute mess there so I'll just get the seeds and like I say, going to do six of each um, and then seal these back up and do some more next week. So I've got some Johnson's leeks here. These are mussel bro. Um, and these are actually from like the year before last. I didn't grow any last year. I grew these ones at home before I had the allotment. Um, and they actually did quite nice in the garden. And again, I'm just going to stick two in each cell, I think. Uh, and then I'll... Um, I'll thin them out whichever one's nicest once they do start germinating. Leeks generally do best in the open ground or if you've got some really large deep containers or some raised beds you could probably grow them in there as well they just need a lot of room. The traditional way to do leeks is to sow them into a seed bed which is a site away from your main vegetable plot and then you transplant them later in the season just because sowing leeks at the final spacings in your main vegetable plot it would take up loads of room early on in the growing season and you could be growing some fast maturing crops there such as lettuce and stuff so you want to grow them a bit further away and then move them into the final site later in the season once everything else has been taken out. There we go, it's got some tags. They're a bit damp actually. Oh, they smell weird. Anyway, um, yep, so moving on to uh, lettuce. So, actually, before I do that, I will get this wrong if I don't do it now. So, So I've got some uh, Simran Romaine lettuce. These ones are from Premier Seeds. Oh, it's like it's like trying to do a packet of sugar or something, trying to get them to go down to the bottom. So I'm just going to try and make a small hole in this just to get a couple out. I've ordered like some of those little jiffy bags, like uh, what drug dealers use. To keep these seeds in once I've opened them just so that they don't go everywhere. Uh, yeah, there we go. Got some uh, nice little lettuce seeds. I'm just going to put a couple in each cell again and then thin them out once they uh, germinate. There's 2,000 seeds in that pack um, for 99p so don't really need to worry too much about wasting them and then there we are finally I've got my uh, little gem and these are from premier seeds as well that's like 10 grams of uh, seeds there's like there's thousands in there 99p there's your uh, little gem seeds and they I wasn't expecting them to be white um, so yeah they look just the same as their old main ones but white instead and obviously they're gonna grow completely different looking lettuces and these ones should be a bit smaller the seeds are the same size and I'm just gonna do that again just sprinkle a couple in each cell. Anyway, I was looking at Google and uh, I was looking for some gardening news and I saw Hello Magazine had done a piece on Monty Don and it says, Gardener's World, Monty Don hits back at fans for critiquing his garden. The TV host responded in the best way. Well, I thought that sounds a bit clickbaity, but I thought I'll have a look anyway. And uh, basically he put some picture of his garden on Twitter because he's fairly active on there. He put a picture up and then uh, some random person uh, replied saying, uh, I've got to be painfully honest, lots of your garden looking like a wilderness of scruffiness. And then he was like, come on, Monty, lop some of them tall herbaceous grass jungle junk out and get some spiral box, big bird tables, quirky paths, colour and food growth. Yeah, I, who cares? And then Monty Don just basically replied to him saying, oh, yeah, I haven't thought of that nice one and or something to that effect. Uh, and anyway, the person's deleted them now, so I don't even know who put it, but I've got a couple of screenshots there. I found a couple of screenshots and stuff, but yeah, hardly uh, crime of the century, but Monty Dunn sorted it out anyway. Keep saying I'm going to get some really nice potting soil and uh, keep it here at the allotment for doing this, and I keep forgetting, and I stuck it to using this um, normal compost, and it's a bit lumpy for doing this, but it does the job anyway. 
there we go that's them done anyway so they're going to come on with me now i'm not going to water them just yet until i get home um, and they can go into the grow box and hopefully in a couple of weeks they'll start germinating again i'll do another update in a couple of weeks um, and you can see how they are all getting on so here's another job that i've been putting off and this is my raspberries and uh, you can see those ones they need uh, they need like training to some wires or something these ones are all staying this year these three are all summer uh, summer raspberries so they're gonna grow on on this wood this is last year's wood uh, that grew last year I only put them all in last year so these are gonna grow this year and raspberries are gonna grow on these canes and then this one here um, this is an autumn raspberry um, and again this is one that I put in last year but this does need pruning down to the ground this year and then this will grow new wood this year and fruit in the same year so I'm just gonna do that now and get these pruned nice and sharp that's dead that's dead Ugh. Well, there we go. That was easy enough. And my final job for today, I have got some sweet peas. And if you remember, I did like a guide in autumn about how to start them off. Um, if you wanted to start off some autumn growing ones. And I put them in the greenhouse and a mouse came in over winter and ate them all. Because apparently, according to mice, sweet peas are absolutely delicious because they're really sweet. Um, just like normal garden peas. A lot of my garden peas got eaten by mice as well last year. Um, but yeah, so what I'm going to do, I've got two varieties. Uh, I've got the ones that I started off uh, last year. I've got them in my pile of seeds here on my table um, and these are just like assorted ones pick these up in B&Q um, nicely sealed with some duct tape on the back got a nice little pot there and then I've got some heaven scent uh, which is 45 seeds and these are from uh, premier seeds direct as well um, so what I'm gonna do just get a couple of each now there's two ways of doing this. You can either um, you can either just sow them straight out the pack, put them straight into your soil, or you can soak them overnight, which um, sort of softens up that shell and the exterior, and uh, apparently helps them germinate. Uh, now I've only ever sown mine dry, and uh, the ones I did in the autumn they were dry and they did amazing uh, until they got eaten. Um, so what I'm going to do. I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do three of these, three of those heaven sent ones. Oh, that's more than three. Um, oh, why did I do this in gloves? Just a sec. So I've got three of the B and Q ones. I'll tell you what. Six, five. We'll get there. So there we go. Five B and Q ones. And I'll do five of these heaven sent ones, which look really nice on the picture. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. They are noticeably smaller, so I should be able to tell which is which. They're nice and mixed up together anyway. And I'm just going to put some water in this tub. Again, I'm going to do that at home because I'm fairly sure that my water butts are frozen here. Um, and I can't really see the point of putting freezing cold water on. That's not going to do them any good. So I'm going to put them in there. I'm going to put them in overnight. Nice and sealed. I like these tubs. And then tomorrow I'm going to sew them and I'm going to sew the dry ones as well. And then we'll see if that makes any difference. And there is a third way. If you've uh, seen what you do with potatoes, when you chit them and you sort of let them sprout, you can also do that with your pea seeds, um, which is, again, another way of doing it. But I don't really think that's necessary. I mean, I've never had any trouble with, um, with just doing them dry, to be honest. But, yeah, we'll see if it makes any difference. And then we'll keep them separate and we'll see how the final plants turn out as well. Well, that's it for today and I've had to come back outside just to do this bit because uh, the sun's just dropped below the tree line and it's starting to get too dark so it's too dark to film inside so I've had to come outside and the temperature's starting to drop off a bit as well so I'm going to get home now, have a brew, get those seeds into my growing box and um, get them started. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel uh, just to keep up to date with all of my gardening videos. Hopefully I'll do some more of these vlogs if you like these as well. Make sure you let me know in the comments if you're doing any of these for yourself and uh, if you're doing any other gardening jobs this week as well let me know about those too. Um, make sure you let me know what the weather's like where you are as well because uh, no doubt it's probably worse than it is here I'm crying about it being minus four but I'm probably gonna have someone saying oh yeah it's minus 20 and uh, you're being soft so yeah let me know what your weather's like and uh, I'll see you next time